Hey everybody, QuestWise here. We are back after a little bit of a hiatus. We had a week off, doing some other crazy stuff. Life gets in the way, blah, 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 blah. But anyhow, we are back and we have uh, something special. I have something special for you. I don't know why I always say we. It's only me here in this crazy head of mine. Today I want to talk about a cool game that uh, I missed out on the Kickstarter on, but uh, was able to buy into through my um through the store that i work with um and that is torg eternity this is by ulysses spiel or ulysses north america um they are a german company that brought to america the dark eye role-playing game which is a phenomenal if you haven't seen my reviews on that please go back and check those out uh it's also written by um Shane Hensley, who brought us Savage Worlds. If you don't know what Savage Worlds is, please go check out my review on that one as well, too. Uh, so two big powerhouses. We've got the company that brought us the Dark Eye and the, and, and the mind behind Savage Worlds. And it brings us Torg. Now, Torg is not new. This is not a... This version of the game is new, but uh, it's in it self is not a new game I believe the original came out in the late to mid 80 mid to late 80s somewhere in there i believe so um and it was just called torg and it came in a box set which was very popular at the time and uh and it's very specific in this book that this is not a second edition it is a new edition and, and i'll explain why what that means in a few minutes when we talk about the world itself Torg Eternity was kickstarted in 2017, 2017, so just last year it was successfully kickstarted and um, came out with a plethora of stretch goals and a very a lot of very happy fans, especially people who had known about Torg in the past and had played in the played the original. I did not. I was aware of Torg, but there wasn't any place near me that sold any of the stuff. Uh, mainly, mainly I knew about it through, you know, different gaming magazines and comic books and stuff, but I never got to play the original. Um, so I missed out on the first craze of them, missed out on the first and iteration of this game. The game is an amazingly cool concept, and I can understand why the people who are in charge of making this new edition we're so passionate about it because there's something very unique and very different about the game. From what I understand, they kept a lot of the stuff uh, fairly fairly the same as, as, as well as they could, but updated it to a more sort of core modern type of thing, type of rules. Now, it does use a D20 to as a, as a core mechanic, but not a D20 in the way that we know D20 as in the D20 system. So for instance, you, in this, uh, the rule system in this is very unique in that it's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's surprising. It, 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 it builds tension the way that the, the game works. And let, and let me explain to you. Whenever you're ready to do something, whenever you want to accomplish something, whether it be attack something or to be some to perform some kind of a feat, you roll a d20. If you're trying to do something in that realm, skill, an attack, whatever, and you roll a 10 or a 20 on the d20, you roll another d20 and add that to the total. Once that number is established, you then add any bonuses from skills or uh, attributes or anything like that to the original number and then compare it to a, a chart. I don't have a character sheet here right in front of me with me, but there's a small little chart at the bottom of the character sheet that you compare that number to, that modified number to, and it will tell you at that point what your official bonus is. You then compare that to whatever the difficulty number is. And if you're over that number, then you're successful. Uh, sometimes it matters how far over that number you are uh, in different situations as well. Um, the other cool thing about it is that there are p 
possibility tokens. These are like action tokens. These are like hero points. We've seen this kind of stuff before, but it will, um, uh, the possibility tokens will let you again, modify that set that, that number even further to try and beat, uh, you know, whatever the difficulty number is, uh, that you're trying to accomplish. Now, in addition to all that, which is less confusing than I probably made it sound, the game does rely on one other thing. Now, I, you probably heard me say this before, but I love role-playing games that have lots of bits and chits. Um, uh, other people might call them fiddly bits. I've heard them called fiddly bits. Um, I love games that use lots of different tokens for different things. I like having stuff, resource management kind of things. I also love cards, love having cards in an RPG. This one cannot run, Torg Eternity cannot run without this, the drama deck. Okay. And it, this is a little deceiving because of, while this says drama deck, you know, there's a huge box. There are actually, th um, well, we have three different types of decks of cards in here. So there's over 180 cards uh, in this box here alone. I plan on sleeving mine soon, even though the quality of the card is very, very good. Um, I'll show you the back. This is the drama card. They all have different backs uh, to differentiate between, you know, the different types of deck. But um, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera. Yeah, a little bit in the light there. It's got like a texture to it. It's almost like a waterproofing kind of thing. Um, kind of a vinyl type of a thing. So... Nice card, but I love that the, that Torg has this ability. A little bit of a, I don't even want to call it a drawback. You can't run the game without the cards. Because these are very integral to the way the game plays itself. So, first off is the drama deck itself. The drama cards, these red ones. Okay. On the other side of them, uh, the drama deck keeps track of... Initiative, so there's a group initiative in the system as well, too, in that um, the card or the drama card will tell you that the heroes go first, the villains go first, and what sort of benefit and or detriment do they get during this turn. And every round, once everybody's done their turn, another drama card is flipped up, which is really, really interesting. It keeps things tense. It keeps things... Um, exciting and it adds little twists and turns to the game itself. Now the heroes also have a deck of cards themselves that they get to draw from and those are known as destiny cards. Uh, every player has a handful of those and they can play those and I won't go into too much detail because there's a little bit of rules on how you can use those in and out of sight of combat and stuff. Um, but those can be used and or traded amongst other players to create some very heroic effects. This game is not this game is not a low level game. This game is meant to portray very heroic, pulpy, over the top kind of action. Players in this game are known as Storm Knights. And I'll go into the background of this game in just a few minutes, but I want to go about the drama deck a little bit more too. The third type of drama card or Part of the drama deck are cosm cards and I'll, and I'll explain to you what a cosm is in a second as well too but the cosm cards uh, increase the danger and the difficulty and the, the drama even further in this game as well too okay what is it about torg torg is very torg is not a generic game at all despite the name that's very similar to gurps which stands for generic universal role-playing system Torg is not one of those games. Torg has a very, very well-defined, well, not well-defined, but a very, very strong uh, world setting to it. It is modern-day Earth and these other realities, from different time and space and whatever, have imprinted themselves. They've arrived here um, on, on our planet and have begin, begun to take over the planet. So these eternity bridges have, have broken out of reality and have slammed into Earth, and they're slowly spreading their influence across the planet. 
So, for instance, most of North America is now known as the Living Land, where this eternity bridge has slammed into North America and has begun to spread this new reality over the, the continent in that uh, it's full of dinosaurs, there's no technology, there's no magic, it's a land of savagery and violence. Very, very reminiscent of early, 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 um, uh, you know, Earth, in the, it's full of dinosaurs and these reptilian creatures and it's steaming jungles and stuff. And there's, and there's six to seven other ones, I believe. There's crazy ones. There's the Nile Empire, the Cyber Papacy, uh, Tharkhold, uh, Isle, which is a, a fantasy based one. And there's lots of everything, every sort of genre that you're interested in, every sort of genre that you could want to play in is here. Now, what's interesting about this is that each one of them has their own world laws because there's, they're trying to exert their own reality over top of ours. Most of the time, the people that are living in the areas when these sort of eternity bridges arrive, these re new realities take place, those people become part of that reality. They're just average, they call them ords in here, ordinary people, and they, they, their will is bent to that, that reality. So for instance, the people who are living in the areas that are taken over by the uh, living lands become savage, almost like cavemen, Tarzan type figures, okay? You're not playing one of those people. Uh, as a player character, you're playing what's called a Storm Knight. Somebody whose body um, and mentality and constitution changed when the Eternity Bridges, when these realities uh, arrived, your body sort of activated and changed with those things. You're able to, as a, as a Storm Knight, you're able to alter the reality and you can, uh, when you're creating a character, you get to choose as well, too. Now, there's a supplement, which is behind me, which I didn't grab off the bookshelf. It's called Day One, where you actually start as an ordinary person. And and, and you can choose any one of these uh, realities that happen. Because they all happen on the same, within a couple of days of each other. Um, you can choose to play an ordinary person from Earth. And then live through the change through your um becoming a storm knight and, and and the activation that happens or you can start at any time point uh in there as well too so by just playing torg eternity with the core rule book you can choose to be from isle from the fantasy type thing you, you were there you've lived there for a while and you, you've sort of become acclimated to that and taken on the abilities from that thing so you can use magic maybe or you can uh you're a knight of 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 whatever and, or you can choose to be from core earth and you have the ability to sort of warp realities. Now, the cool thing about this is, is that every, every reality, every sort of different, um, uh, uh, place that's been taken over has its own sort of, it has its own rules, its own laws, its own physics. Uh, so like I said, the living land has very low magic, has very low technology, uh, but is very high in other things as well. As a storm, as an ordinary person, so like if you were to bring a car into the living land, it would instantly just fall apart. It would instantly just rot and rust and just fall apart because it's contradictory, and that's what they call it in the game, a contradiction. It's contradictory to that world's laws. There shouldn't be technology available. It just hasn't been invented yet. Storm Knights are able to bring those things with them. For a short period of time. So like I could, as a Storm Knight, I could bring a gun into the Living Lands. That's not something that's, that's contradictory to that type of thing. And that's like I bring it with me or I could bring magic with me. But every time I use those things, anytime I contradict the laws, that, laws, or that world's realities of law, there's a chance that I might disconnect from from my reality. It's a very interesting concept, and it's very it's a little confusing. I have to say that it did take me uh, coming from a very you know D twenty centric background. I did have to sort of like readjust the way I thought about things. So I'm sure that people who had played Torg in the early days uh, probably probably had no problem doing those kind of things. It was sort of inborn to them. For me, it's been a little bit of an adjustment, but I love the fact that it's it's there. 
and that every single reality has a different feel, has a different laws, and has different ways that it actually works in the game. And I love the, how well that these this drama deck, that these cards, that's the focus here, that these things actually work together with all of them. And the Cosm cards are each that kind of thing too. So it depends on what Cosm you're in, depending on what kind of Cosm card you get dealt. And on those things could be very, very bad things, and they could be very, very good things for you. Generally, they're bad things that happen, but give you some sort of a benefit. They give you more, uh, they let you draw more cards, or they let you uh, have more possibility tokens, that type of thing. Torg Eternity, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend getting the core book. Uh, in addition to that, you have to get the cards in order to play the game, in order to run the game. You only need one set for everybody. So the, the basically falls upon the game master um, to get the deck of cards. But every player does not need their own deck of cards. There's enough in here uh, to run a game um, for everybody. So that's that's a great deal there as well, too. I would recommend if you haven't played Torg uh, at all before, uh, uh, if you want to do, I wish my camera would focus here. There we go. The magic of the internet. I, I apologize to everybody, and I know somebody mentioned this in the last video. I'm kind of getting off track here a little bit. I've been using my phone to to film all these videos and for some reason it will not let me turn off the live focus thing so if you see it sort of thumping or throbbing or going out of focus i've been trying to fix that soon it'll probably stay this way until i actually upgrade into a real camera uh, but until then i apologize anyway back to the subject at hand if you've played torg before uh, this might not be a, a big thing for you, but if you're, you're new to Torg Eternity, this newest iteration of the game, I'd highly recommend that in addition to getting the core book and the deck of cards, getting uh, the supplement called Day One. It's a series of adventures that, that allows you to slowly work your way into the world. And so it slowly introduces the player characters. It comes with a ton of pre-generated characters, both in their ordinary Earth forms and uh, in their Storm Knight forms once they 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 um, advance into that um but it also gives hints and tips for the game master to slowly learn the rules um and as you play through these adventures and go through each one of them slowly unfolds how all of this stuff works so highly recommended if you've never been introduced to torg before uh is the day one supplement other new stuff coming out, the Living Lands Kickstarter was just successfully uh, funded, and that'll be coming out to the public probably shortly by the end of the year. But Torg Eternity, really, really, really well done. I can't say enough about the, the quality of the product itself. I mean, like, the game itself is wonderful. The artwork is phenomenal. Um, but it is Ulysses North America, which is the, you know, American version of Ulysses Spiel out of Germany. Um, but you get, um, you know, two dual built-in bookmarks, the nice ribbon ones. This binding is sewn and stitched. Uh, like I said earlier, the cards have this nice sort of almost vinyl feel to them. I'm going to, um, I'm going to sleeve them anyway, but, um, uh, but still really high, nice quality cards, even outside of that. Um, so we get the Minds Behind the Dark Eye, as well as other stuff from Ulysses Spiel. And the the brilliant mind of Shane Hensley um, from from Savage Worlds. So check it out, Torg Eternity. Awesome. I give it a you know three thumbs up. Uh, that's a, a scoring method at all. But uh, until next time, I'm Questwise, and we're out. <laughs>